How do you determine the area of a circle? The ancient Greeks came up with a very clever way where they used a series of increasingly better approximations in which they inscribed the circle inside of a regular polygon. I want to take you through that method. We're going to start with the simplest of the regular polygons being the equilateral triangle. Now as you can see here, the circle is inscribed inside the triangle uh, and what that means is that the midpoint of each side of the regular polygon, in this case the triangle, is touching the circle. Now what we're going to do here is approximate the area of the circle by measuring the area of the triangle, which we know how to do. Uh, except instead of doing it the easy way, we're going to do it in what at first might seem like a more complex way, but it actually works out well because this method is going to work for polygons with even more sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the triangle up into three separate triangles uh, that all meet up at the center of the circle. So now the area of the triangle is going to be three times the area of one of these smaller triangles. Since this is an equilateral triangle and all the sides are the same length and it meets right at the center, each of these smaller triangles all has the same area. So three times the area of the smaller triangle and the smaller triangle has an area which is one half the height times the base, which is the area of a triangle. Now, as you can see here, the height of the small triangle is equal to the radius of the circle. And the base is equal to one of the sides of the triangle. Now, I'm going to make one more substitution, which seems complicated right now, but you'll see how it actually simplifies things in the end. The base, or the side of the triangle, is actually equal to one-third of the perimeter of the triangle. Since the triangle is equilateral, uh, as in any regular polygon, all the sides are the same length, and there are three sides, therefore the side is one-third times the perimeter. Therefore, the area of the triangle is equal to three times one-half times the radius times one-third the perimeter. The three and the one-third cancel out, and you're left with the area of the triangle is equal to one-half rp, where p is the perimeter of the triangle and r is the radius of the circle. Now, we can get a little bit of a better approximation of the area of the circle by going up to the next regular polygon, which is the square. Now here, we can do the exact same thing that we did with the triangle. We can determine the area of the square, not going the easy way, but by dividing it up into four triangles. Again, meeting up at the center of the circle. And here, the area of the square is equal to four times the area of the smaller triangle, which is one-half the height times the base. And we can do the same substitutions where the height is the radius of the circle and the base is equal to one-fourth times the perimeter of the polygon, which in this case is the square. So we have A equals four times one-half R times one-fourth P. The four and the one-fourth cancel out and you end up with A equals one-half RP. If we move up to the pentagon, the next regular polygon, we can again get an even better approximation of the area of the circle and use the same exact method divided up into five triangles where we get five times one-half the radius times one-fifth the perimeter, which again, the 5 and the 1 -fifth cancel out, and we have area equals 1 half RP. We go to a hexagon, 
divides up into six triangles, all of whose area is one half r times one sixth of p. In other words, the area of the polygon is one half rp. An octagon, same thing. Eight triangles, each of them is equal to one half r times one eighth p. The eight and the one eighth cancel out. One half rp. In fact, the general case for any regular polygon with n sides, the area of that polygon is going to be equal to n times one half times r times one nth p, where p is the perimeter of that polygon. And this is always going to be the case because regular polygons are going to have n sides that are all the same length, meaning that each length is going to be one nth times the perimeter, and you're going to be able to divide them up into n triangles, all who have that area. Now you may have noticed another thing, that as we're increasing the number of sides of the polygon, we're getting better and better approximations not only of the area of the circle, but the perimeter of the polygon is approaching the circumference of the circle. In fact, you might even be able to describe a circle, as the ancient Greeks did, as a regular polygon with an infinite number of sides. So if we have a polygon whose perimeter is exactly equal to the circumference of a circle, its area will be exactly equal to the circumference of a circle. So using the formula we have, we can say that the area of a circle is equal to one-half its radius multiplied by its circumference. Now there is a fixed ratio between the circumference of a circle and its diameter. And the diameter is, of course, twice the radius. And this ratio is known as pi. Now, that means that we can express the circumference in terms of the radius using this ratio. In other words, since pi is equal to the circumference divided by twice the radius, the circumference is equal to two times the radius multiplied by pi. Substituting that back into the equation that which we had determined before of uh, the area of the circle being one-half the radius times the circumference, we get the area of the circle is equal to one-half times the radius times two times the radius times pi. In other words, the area of the circle is equal to pi r squared. And that's how the ancient Greeks figured it out. Now, if you want to actually calculate it, you're going to have a little bit of a problem because pi is what's known as an irrational number. In other words, it cannot be expressed as the ratio of two natural numbers, or in modern terms, as a decimal that terminates. But you can approximate it. And a decent approximation is 3.14, or 314, which here in America is March 14th, which is today. So that makes today Pie Day. And we should all go out and celebrate Pie Day by eating pie, be it an apple pie, or a shepherd's pie, or a pizza pie. Either way, eat pie and happy pie day.